Hello friends, my name is Amit and today we will discuss the short story The Enemy by Pearl S. Buck. We have already had a session regarding this in which we discussed the summary and the extracts. So to go over the objectives of this chapter and summary quickly. So the objectives of this chapter are to understand the war narrative, understand um, the idea of narrow nationalism versus humanism, understand uh, the craft of short story through Pearl S. Buck's narrative and also understand inner conflicts of human minds which this short story brings out very beautifully. To, su to summarize the story quickly, an American soldier washes up on the Japanese shore in the village of Sadao Haki who is a trained surgeon who was trained in America. Now the war is going on between America and Japan and if Sadao treats this person, he would be harboring a spy, a prisoner of war and that could lead Sadao to great trouble. Sadao and his wife, however, because of human empathy and because this man is wounded, foster him and Sadao treats him, performs surgery on him and he starts getting well. The servants get afraid, leave the house. Um, the military general summons Sadao and um, says that he will send assassins to kill uh, the American soldier. The general does not want to arrest Sadao because Sadao has to perform surgery on the general himself. And so if Sadao is condemned to death, uh, who would perform the surgery? So Sadao waits anxi anxiously for the assassins to come for three nights. The assassins do not turn up. And then Sadao plans an escape for the American soldier in a boat to a little island where Koreans would be able to rescue him. Um, surgery is performed upon the general which is successful and it turns out that the general himself had not sent the assassins. The general says that he was so absorbed in his illness that he forgot about the assassins but the hint here is that the general also has um, a big heart and he also does not want to punish this American soldier who Sadao has fostered so carefully and whose life he has saved. So this is the summary of the story and it is a very interesting human story in a war time where there are two enemies and yet you take care, end up taking care of the enemy and why that happens is something that this story explores. So let us explore the themes in this story. The first important theme is the idea of stereotypes. What is a stereotype? When you generalize about a community, let's say we say things about Africans or Americans or a, or a race like um, in this story, uh, the American soldier has been called a white man continuously and the way white people are perceived by the Japanese people, also how Japanese people are perceived by American people. Similarly, in India, we have perceptions about all kinds of people, Punjabi people, South Indian people, Bengali people and so on and so forth. We hold prejudices and these are called stereotypes. What is the origin of the word stereotype? So when the printing presses emerged, the type set that was used, uh, the block that was used to print a newspaper would be the same, right? So you would print multiple copies of a newspaper with that stereotype. And so basically it's one idea which is imposed upon everybody. And so the word changed its meaning to the current meaning that we have. This is how we stereotype people, we generalize them, we form ideas about them because we do not know adequately about them. And this story is a great story in terms of exploring how we get prejudiced against other communities. Both Sadao and Hana have studied in America, but because of the war, because of the intrinsic um, Japanese prejudice against the Americans, we see um, that they are also prejudiced. They also faced prejudices in America where the Japanese were viewed in a certain manner. And so the prejudices exist on both sides. And this is the idea of stereotypes that's been very well explored in this story. Continuing with this thread, the other idea to explore is the idea of the other as demon. So we view other communities as demons, other countries as demons. This is what this short story challenges. This is where Pearl Buck challenges us majorly. 
um, to be able to understand other cultures, to be able to understand other psychologies, other thought processes. Uh, an interesting comparison would be with Arthur C. Clarke's short story, Hate. Very similar story, except that um, this story, the enemy, ends up in a happy ending, whereas Hate is a sad ending, an unhappy ending. So, a Hungarian fisherman, Sabo Tibor, um, while he is at the ocean, there is a space capsule that crashes into the ocean and he realizes that it is a Russian capsule. Russia had, had invaded Hungary in 1956 and there was a lot of hatred against Russia in Hungary. And so, Tibor wants to hurt whoever is inside the capsule. He realizes that there is somebody inside the capsule and they start communicating. So, the person inside the capsule can hear Tibor, but he cannot hear outside. And so, they communicate with Knox. Um, he asks questions and the person inside knocks once, it means a yes, knocks twice means a no. So, it is entirely through a series of yeses and noes that the conversation goes on and he realizes that the person inside is Russian. And he tells the person also through yeses and noes that he hates the Russians and that he is going to kill him or her. And so, while he brings out the capsule, he makes sure that it bumps against uh, various rocks and walls um, and the person inside dies. And so, uh, when the capsule is opened, it is a beautiful young Russian girl um, who is the victim of Tibor's hate and Tibor is um, shattered and heartbroken at the end of it. And so, the whole perception of another culture as, as demoness is something that is that has been pervasive throughout history and especially during globalization when we need to be wary of forming quick conclusions. Um, this story is very useful as a food for thought. Another important point is narrow nationalism versus humanism that is explored in this story which is also a very pertinent point in the era of globalization that we are living in. For example, Mexican immigrants in US or Britain voting for Brexit, uh, the sphere of immigrants, um, whereas the entire globe need, needs, uh, needs businesses from each other, needs collaborations with each other. And so, we see in this story how actually Sadao has been trained in America, but he is also trained to hate Americans which is the great paradox that he's received his knowledge domain from America. He's a skilled surgeon and he's indispensable to the Japanese military because he was trained in America. But at the same time, now he's a Japanese nationalist because Japan is at war with America. And the entry of this soldier reawakens the humanism inside him that as a doctor, it's his duty to save a patient irrespective of whether he's Japanese or American. It would be very interesting here to point out um, the great poet Rabindranath Tagore's thought on humanism. He also had similar thoughts that humanism is above everything else. Humanism is above narrow nationalistic interests. The nationalism is important, but at the same time, we are a global family um, and which is enshrined in our idea of Vasudev Kutumbakam as well and that we are humans first and we should care about the welfare of all human beings across the earth and not hate each other. The next important point and which is one of the most important points in this story is gender roles and gender injustice and how it is subsumed by larger narratives. So, the larger narrative is about war, is about military generals, is about Sadao the surgeon, is about the American soldier whether he will survive or not. But Pearl Buck introduces a gendered angle uh, to this story as well, when she talks about General Takima's cruelty towards his wife. So, it is said that the Japanese people are received uh, wherever they go, the Japanese army is received very well, um, but at the same time she has heard of General Takima's cruelty towards his wife and she thinks if Takima can be cruel to his wife, why would not he be cruel to uh, prisoners of war? And this is a recurring theme in the story because there are scars on Tom's, the American soldier's neck and both Sadao and Hana notice it and wonder if, if these are torture wounds 
and they are the hint is that they are torture wounds and that armies do torture their prisoners despite whatever the protocol is this is also a very important point that the writer over uh, is making here um, there is another example which is sneaked in into the story which is Hannah eating food only after Sadao. Despite the fact that she has lived in America, so has Sadao. They are modern people, they are empathetic people. They follow the tradition of man eating first and the woman eating next inside a household. And so as a woman writer, um, uh, uh, Pearl Buck drops hints about gender roles in the society and how deeply they are entrenched in our society. So the question friends is, is the perspective of a woman writer different from a man's point of view? If a man had written this story, would it be different than what Pearl Buck has written? Would he also introduce this idea of Hannah eating food after Sadao? Would he also have talked about General Takima's cruelty towards wife? Compare, so I would like you to compare various narratives, similar narratives that have been written by men and that have been written by women and see if there is a difference. And you would notice that there is a difference uh, because all fiction that we write, there is a bit of our own autobiography uh, involved in it as well. Another important point is how language is inadequate and is framed by larger narratives. This is the crux of this story. As much as it focuses on its content of the battle between mind and heart in Sadao, Hana and the general, it also focuses on language and how language fails us. There is a whole language of nationalism, of war mongering, of how one has to be loyal to Japan throughout and nobody knows anything beyond this language. Sadao cannot speak beyond this language, Hana cannot speak beyond this language, so cannot the general. And yet all these three characters are very empathetic towards the cause of this young soldier who is wounded and healing at this time. And so it is through the inadequacies of language, through the gaps in their language, that, that the story becomes beautiful, that none of them say that they love the American or they love this soldier. All of them keep saying that they hate the soldier, he should die and yet he lives because of all these three characters, because there is empathy and that empathy does not seem to find uh, expression in language, because there is fear in the air. If they speak about it, they are going to be castigated. Even the military general who Sadao calls excellency, even he, when he does not send the assassin, he does not openly say that I did not send the assassins because I want the soldier to live because Sadao, you have saved this man and I value your uh, contribution as a surgeon or any other reason. He merely says I forgot about it. I was so absorbed in my illness that I completely forgot about it and I hope you will forgive me um, and that it will not be considered a dereliction of my duty. So even a high military general is not able to own what his heart says. Um, or his empathetic point of view. And so language many times in our life becomes inadequate to express what we want to say. And that is the beauty of literature that it explores these gaps, these silences, that silences must be heard. There is a lot in what is not said. What is not said probably says much more than what is said as you can see in this story. That there is love in this story, there is empathy in this story, but those words are never used entirely. Only the words hatred and death are used throughout the story. So that is a very interesting point about the story. The next important point which is related to the previous point is the dilemmas and the inner conflicts, battles between the conscious mind and the empathetic intuitive mind or heart. So on the surface, all the characters know their duty. Sadao knows that he is a Japanese surgeon, he must hand over the prisoner to the Japanese army. Hana knows that the man should not live in a house. The servants know that he should be handed over to the army. The military general knows that he has to send assassins to kill this American man. So everybody's conscious mind is clear on what should be done and yet there is a subconscious mind 
an empathetic and an intuitive mind which says that you cannot kill a person who has faced so much danger and peril that he deserves a second chance. And this dilemma is explored very beautifully um, in this story. The last point um, to discuss in terms of theme is literature as a reflection of the lived world of cultural and historical inquiry. So, literature, especially now that you are in class 12 and many of you would probably be studying literature for your undergrad studies, is not about language merely. Language is a vehicle, and language is also inadequate as we have seen. But literature is a reflection of the society. It informs our philosophical, historical, cultural circumstances. So, through this story, we have got an entry into World War II. Through this story, you will be able to explore what happened between America and Japan, why Pearl Harbor was bombed, why America used two nuclear weapons in Hiroshima and Nagasaki, how that has changed the world, how that led to Cold War, as well as cultural reflection. Um, that we get to know a lot about Japanese culture, tradition and also um, the tradition of empathy, not just cultural tradition in terms of a patriarchal culture as we have seen and how lived world, how the lives that normal people leave, live are very different from the larger narratives that we see in newspapers and history books and literature explores that liminal space, that in between space. Um, to understand history through common people's eyes. So, that is something um, that you should definitely de develop your interest in. Now, we look at um, the issue of form. So, in modern usage, this story would be called slow burn, um, as you say for movies which are thrillers, on the edge thrillers. Um, in which the plot unfolds slowly and in which there is tension throughout the plot. And so, in this, we do not know throughout the story whether the American soldier will be saved. It, it goes topsy-turvy on every single page. Um, whether he would survive the ravages of the ocean, we do not know. Whether Sadao would be able to save him, we do not know. And then, whether the military general would send his assassins, we do not know. And after that, um, when he is sent um, to the island by Sadao, where, whether he would be able to survive on the island, whether the Koreans would be able to save him. So, practically on every page of this very long story of 40 pages, we are perplexed and we are with the American soldier, whether he would be saved or not. So, it is a perfect sort of slow burn thriller. The other important thing about um, form is twist in the tale. As um, uh, we have discussed in the previous um, sessions as well with other stories, one of the most important aspects of a short story is the twist in the tale, that it moves in a certain way, it explores a certain theme and then it takes a sudden U-turn or uh, a sudden jolt, a sudden break which shakes you out of um, complacency as a, as a reader. And this is the hallmark of a good short story from Anton Chekhov to Guy de Maupassant to uh, Manto or Premchand, a good story writer always shocks you in the end. Um, here the shocks are of a different kind. So, the first little shock that we get is when Sadao is called to see the military general um, regarding the general's illness, but it turns out uh, that it is about the American too. So, Hannah is first told that it is only about general's illness, so she feels relief that oh, the general does not know about the American, so their family is saved. But when Sadao goes to meet the general, he does know about the American. And so, that is the little shock that we get as a reader. But the bigger twist is at the end and it is not a straightforward twist. It is a twist by absence as we have been discussed, that this story works on absences, on silences. The twist comes when we get to know that the general did not send the assassins on purpose. So, he makes lots of excuses that he forgot about sending the assassins, he was concerned about his illness, etcetera, etcetera. But it is through those excuses that we exactly know that the general um, respected Sadao's decision to save the American man. And so, this, this twist comes by absence through aporia, um, through this kind of a strategy that the writer employs. Now, let us have a little look at the author also. 
Pearl Seiden Strecker Buck spent a large part of her life in China, and her family stayed back in China twice in the face of hostility when the Americans were being evacuated. Um, and so, Pearl Buck herself has a history um, in the Orient, and she also spent time in Japan. So she had first-hand experience of both China and Japan, and more than half her life was. Uh, spent in China, she could not return later um, to China uh, when the communist regime came. Um, she is also a Nobel Prize winner in 1938, as uh, already mentioned at the beginning. She designed her own tombstone, which is inscribed in Chinese character. She was so much in love with China, and so Pearl S. Buck is a very interesting case of fusion of a truly international global writer, which definitely has informed her writing in breaking the stereotype about the Japanese and Americans and to show that eventually it is human beings and eventually it is human emotions and that human beings across the world are beautiful and caring. Um, that seems to be her message through this story, um, The Enemy, which works through silences largely as we have discussed. So, Studying an author profile does sometimes help understanding a story, um, but it is a supplement. One should not try to read too much of biography in, into any story, though it connects here directly, she having stayed in Japan and China, and so she has more sensitivity about this issue. But many times it can be misleading as well, which is why I brought the author at the end, that one should do a close reading of the text for what it is rather than have it informed through biography. For example, Sylvia Plath, the great American poet um, in the mid 20th century, uh, she is read through her biography of uh, depression, mental illness, etc. and so her poems are read in that light. And so the feminist um, sting, the power of her poetry is sometimes reduced by always linking it with her biography. And which is why, as a strategy, as we as readers, as students, should always um, refer to the text first and extract its meaning and then see if autobiography helps in um, supplementing it rather than the other way around trying to read meanings um, through the author's life itself. And um, there are very interesting Japanese terms also that come up in this story. So, words like haori, which is a Japanese dress, um, kimono, which is also a, a Japanese dress. Um, Tokonama uh, is a Japanese scroll which is kept in an alcove uh, in this story. So, we also see how um, writing cross cultural stories also lead uh, us to these various fascinating terms and words and introduces us to various new cultural um, expressions. And so, we have seen that this, this story is um, a great story on many counts as a war narrative that a war only has losers, there are no winners in a war, there are only dead people on both sides and there is only hatred. And so, um, it is an important war narrative in terms of anti-war writing, it also questions narrow nationalism, the jingoistic kind of nationalism that one should definitely be nationalist, but at the same time one should have human values intact. And it also shows us how the whole globe is connected, how we are all connected in, in various ways that we may be getting education from our, um, from somebody who, a nation which may become the nation's enemy at a later stage and so on and so forth. But it is humanism which is at the core of Pearl S. Buck's um, thesis um, in this story. Um, and so, to um, sum up, this story should be read as an anti-war narrative, as a humanist narrative, as a cross-cultural narrative and also uh, a great story in terms of understanding human psychology and language. So friends, this was our discussion about the short story The Enemy by Pearl S. Um, Buck. We have uh, discussed the summary, extracts, various themes. Um, points about uh, the form of the short story as well. So, I would encourage you to look at the questions in the textbook. They have all been discussed um, through uh, different means, 
through the discussions um, um, in these sessions. So I hope you are able to answer them well. So thank you very much for being with me and hope to see you soon with another chapter, another short story. Thank you.